What's up fellow Star Wars fans, Jesse here, welcome to episode 9 of Star Wars Go Figure. On this Saturday, the 10th of November 2018, hope everyone has had a fantastic week. I hope you've got some Star Wars stuff in, I hope you've, I hope you've just had a great week. It's a beautiful day here in sunny Adelaide in South Australia, it's, it's a really nice day, I should really be outside. But uh, we've got some news to talk about today. I just dropped an episode two days ago, so... You know, two and three days is treading new territory for me. So I'm pretty excited. Um, got to work yesterday. By the time I went to morning tea at about nine o'clock, I was bombarded with posts on Instagram and Facebook about a Cassian and or TV series. So that just uh, that just shot into complete overdrive. My fan brain just started going mental and I almost had a mental breakdown and had to had to just stop and think for a minute because that was that was it was a surprise it was a big surprise but uh a little bit from the press releases here i've just got some articles up it says uh disney chairman and ceo bob Iger announced yesterday during a conference call i'm guessing with major shareholders or something something related to that sort of professional side of things that lucasfilm is in development on a second star wars live action tv series for disney plus now we can all stop calling it the Disney streaming service now. I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm sick of calling it. I'm glad that's got a name. That's one of the big things of yesterday. Disney Plus. That's going to be Disney's streaming service. And we can all move on and start calling it Disney Plus. So that's going to be, yeah, like I said, Disney's new direct-to-consumer streaming service. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, where do I sign up? I want to give you my money now. I wish, I really do wish Disney would stop telling me about things that I want right now. But uh, the second Star Wars live-action series is going to be based on Cassian Andor from Rogue One, played by Diego Luna, who will be reprising his role. Uh, it is touted to be a rousing spy thriller that will explore tales filled with espionage and daring missions to restore hope to the galaxy in the grip of a ruthless empire. So that sounds pretty damn exciting to me. Um... We've had all but a taste of Cassian Andor, and uh, he was one of my favourite characters in Rogue One, uh, if not the my favourite character from Rogue One. Um, there's a lot of depth there to my mind. I think there's a lot of he's a he, he comes across he came across straight away as quite a complex character, and we sort of we were sort of jumped into Rogue One right in the middle of something he was doing, and uh, so that'll be fantastic. Uh, there was a small, short, short little interview with Diego Luna, and I quote: "He said, going back to the Star Wars universe is very special for me. I have so many memories of the great work we did together on Rogue One and the relationships I made throughout the journey. We have a fantastic adventure ahead of us, and this new exciting format will give us the chance to explore this character more deeply." Um, so that was, like I said, that was from Diego Luna himself, and. I don't know, I really like the guy. I think I think he's a great actor. I think he showed a lot as Cassian Andor. He's got a lot of charisma, a lot of charm. Um, and he. I, th I feel like he did a great job in Rogue One. I'm looking forward to seeing more. It's, it was, it's so good that he's coming back. They didn't have to recast. Um, so that's a thrill. So we know we know a little bit about Cassian Andor. Um, I guess from my point... The part that really got me was was his first scene. Basically, he's on the ring of Kafreen, and you know he's meeting up with his rebel informant, who's you know telling him about this super weapon that the Empire is building. Um, that tells him they call it the Death Star, but the inf informant can't get away with him, so he shoots him. He puts his informant down, um, and that was as soon as that happened. It, that was a shocking moment. It was a case of. Well, this isn't this isn't the rebel. This isn't a rebel that we're used to. This is a different rebel. Um, in terms of we haven't sort of seen this side of the rebellion before. That there is sort of a edgier, more desperate sort of look at the um, at trying to find a way against the empire. And we saw see more in uh, Saw Gerrera sort of throughout the movie as well. But Cassian's our first sort of look into that sort of. I don't want to say darker, but it's a edgier side of the rebellion that there is, you know, there are people out there willing to make some hard calls to, you know, in the hope 
of bringing more hope to the galaxy, I guess. And Cassian, as well, We what we do know is that his family sided with the Separatists throughout the Clone Wars. Um, so again, that gives us another completely different perspective as to how Cassian was brought up. He's been in the fight since he was five years old. He, he said that in Rogue One. So we're assuming, you know, at this point he's in his late 20s. I think he's meant to be 28 or 29 or something like that. So he's he hasn't had an easy life. He's, he's quite jaded. He's quite, you know, he's got a bit of a cynical edge, a bit of a hard edge. As for as for things that I hope that we get to see, um, I think my number one is obviously K2SO. Um, he's probably one of my favourite droids to come out in the new sort of era of Star Wars. BB-8's up there, of course. I've got a tattoo of BB-8 on my arm. But K2SO, he's... I mean, obviously Alan Tudyk brings a lot of life to K2SO. Alan Tudyk's fantastic, and I'm sure he'd come back if he was asked. Um, so I really hope we get to see more K2. He's a, he's a fantastic droid. I just I love that moment where, you know, Jin gives gives him her bag and just has that speech about, you know, shooting him instead of shooting her, and he's just sort of, that doesn't sound so bad, and he just drops her bag on the floor. He doesn't give a crap. I think that, <laughs> I think that was so good. And just some of his wisecracks were hilarious. Um, K2 was a fantastic droid. I hope we see more. And I hope we get to delve back into Yavin and see some more of the Rebellion and see more characters like General Draven. Um, he was a fantastic character. We didn't see a great deal of him, but he's a hard-edged rebel leader. He's all of, he's a man of action. He needs to get things done. Um, from what I understand, he is also sort of the leader of the sort of spy division of the Rebellion. Um, so he, he'd be an interesting one to see more of. Uh, Radis, he'd be cool to see. I don't think we'd see more Radis. I think he's, you know, we might see him, I don't know. I'm not sure we'll, we will see, though, um, within the next 12 to 18 months, I suppose. Less than that. Yeah, probably 12 to 13 months. It's November already. It's just ridiculous. Um, there are lots of characters in Rogue One. I don't think we'll see any more of the, the crew of Rogue One. I don't think Jin will show up. Um, I don't think Baz and Chirrut will show up, no Bodhi, um, maybe Saw Gerrera, who knows, I'm sure Forrest Whitaker would be down to come back for that too, um, to develop a little bit more Saw, I thought we were going to get more Saw in Rebels than we got, I thought there was going to be a little bit more about, you know, how he came into having, you know, a, a stuffed up leg and having to need the breathing apparatus, I thought, I really did think that was going to be explored in Rebels, but... Uh, yet, to, yet to happen so that could absolutely happen in the Cassian series um, to see how Saw gets so damaged and broken um, to how we saw him sort of earlier in Rebels and he wasn't quite the the shattered human that he was in Rogue One um, so we could definitely see uh, Saw Gerrera show up I think that would be cool um, maybe more Jeddah I don't know I feel like Cassian Cassian knows Jeddah I'm not sure whether he's been there we'll see there's so much we could speculate about, but there's lots of things we could put on a wish list. Uh, just sort of trolling around the internet, uh, there's there's mixed fan reactions, of course. I don't like you'd expect anything else. Um, people are already writing this thing off. Um, so I saw one interesting comment that basically said, like, um, why the hell are they doing this? Um, you know, we don't know anything about Cassie, and why do we care? Well, that's, that's the point of the series to give us more story about Cassian so then come Rogue One we care a whole lot more when he perishes at the end with Jin and he changes his his character changes and you know joins Jin's cause to try and help and you know he, he understands the sacrifice and I think he, it's going to take a bit to grow into that but you don't uh, the Rogue One didn't allow a lot of that room to, to grow and still have total compassion for him. And I think a series will absolutely grow him into someone that we can, you know, have ultimate compassion for and, and at the end of by the end of Rogue One, by the time his story wraps up there. Um, but yeah, it's it's typical typical internet rubbish that we're seeing at the moment in terms of, you know, negative comments, people you know, basically saying they're not they're not going to spend the money on the Disney streaming service. I'm like, well, why are you here commenting? That's whatever, <laughs> whatever. I try not to pay too much attention to all that stuff these days. I just want to. I'll talk to people who are interested in it, and um, you know, you got a bit of 
bit of uh, criticism or, you know, a bit of thought about it, I'd definitely up for a discussion. But yeah, um, what are your thoughts? If, you, if you're listening, you know, drop me a line, drop me an email, um, and we'll talk about it on the next show. And drop a comment if you're watching here on YouTube. Um, shoot me an email, theforcesofjesse at gmail.com, um, and we'll, we'll discuss it next week. Um, let me know what you think of Cassie and Endor being a TV series, becoming a TV series. Um, there's a lot of talk online about it. You know, there's a lot of bets. I think uh, the Facebook page, uh, the website from Fall on to Zuckus, there's a bit of talk over there about them calling it the Fulcrum or Fulcrum. I think that's a great idea um, that carries on nicely from from Rebels, and uh, you know, it was it was the code name for Ahsoka before she showed back up, and then it was the code name for um, oh blanking on his name <laughs> Agent Callus um, yeah the Fulcrum I think would be a really cool title I'm not sure what else you call it whether you just call it Andor I don't know if that sounds right it's Andor yeah I think it's going to be something interesting um, we'll see we'll see I hope I hope to find out well, we're going to find out next year it's not going into production until next year so it's probably going to be pretty pretty quiet on that front until next year but it's exciting nonetheless. Um, I don't really have a lot else to, to say or think about it at the moment. It's still very fresh. Um, I'm still very early on in thinking about it. I'm going to try and sit down and watch Rogue One over the weekend. It sort of inspired me to go back and rewatch that and, and really focus on Cassian as a character. And that will allow me to think about it a little bit more. And maybe next, maybe next episode I can come up with some other thoughts and uh, we can have another chat about it. But yeah, I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys think. That would be really cool to hear what you guys think. Um, you just drop me a line anywhere you can find me. But uh, yeah, in terms of news, that's that's the biggest thing that's hit in the last couple of weeks. Um, there's been a few little things out there, but nothing nothing like this. This is big. Um, so I haven't really had any other bits and pieces. No toy news this week. Um, I did have some recent pickups. I have hit up Greenlight Comics um, in the city last night went to went to, out to dinner with the wife and yeah did the trip to the comic book store and grabbed grabbed the new titles uh, grabbed the last Jedi trade paperback um, the Lando Double or Nothing trade paperback so I've, I'm about four or five books behind I'm starting to catch up now which is awesome and I got the issue number one of the Han Solo Imperial Cadet comic series so I'm looking forward to having a look at that one as well but for the most part, that was pretty much... It was a pretty quiet week. Trying to just tighten up the wallet a little bit before Christmas starts rolling in. Because that's going to be here very, very quickly. We're only six or seven weeks away from that. So I need to start saving some money. But I still really want to buy that Lego Porg. I know I spoke about that yes the other day. Um, so I'm looking for... I'm really hoping to get that. But uh, I think that just about wraps things up for the week. I hope you all have a great weekend. Let me know what you're up to. If you're doing anything Star Wars, tell me. What are you, what are you up to on the weekend? Just tell me what you're doing. That'd be cool. We'll have a bit of a chat ski on, online. I'm going to be sitting down and finally building my Lego AT hauler that I got last week. Um, that's been sitting there staring me in the face ever every day I come home from work. I look at it, I'm like, going to get you. I'm going to build you. This weekend, I'm going to build it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm also hoping to just kick back and get a few hours of Red Dead Redemption 2 in. That that game is... That's so good. It's so good. Um, but apart from that, I'm, I'm going to want to sit down and watch Rogue One, like I said. that uh, It's been a few months since I've watched Rogue One. It's been well over six months, I reckon. I don't think I've watched it. I watched it once this year, I think. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to going back and watching that again. It's been too long. If you want to have a chat, you can find me online, um, all over the place. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and Podbean, and you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash The Forces with Jesse. You can find me on Instagram at The Forces with Jesse, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Forces with Jesse. I usually post all my episode info when new episodes are dropped throughout all those social platforms, so definitely stay tuned and uh, like and follow so you can catch them as soon as they drop. I 
appreciate all your comments on my last couple of episodes. I haven't got around to replying to a lot of those comments yet. Um, also for the messages I get just to say that you've been listening and watching and stuff like that. It's it's always great to hear from people that are enjoying it and I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, and definitely drop me any feedback if you've got any feedback you want to give me how I can improve any whatever. Um, uh, drop a five star review on iTunes too. If you've got a few minutes just jump on there and do that. That would be fantastic. We've got a couple on there already which is great. So, until my next episode, guys, I hope you all, like I said, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, have a great week next week, and until then, may the force be with you.